Hello, Movie Geeks. I'm here at the Atlanta Film Festival on behalf of Movie Geeks United, your favorite podcast. And I'm here with Les Ottolinghi, the producer of a new movie called Submit the Documentary. Now, I haven't seen Submit the Documentary yet, and so I like I usually like to see the movies beforehand, but I think I can handle it. Tell me, tell me a little bit about what Submit is about. Uh, Submit is about the story of uh, Cyberboy. Uh-huh. What's happening with uh, our youth, young adults, as they go through the challenge of being cyberbullied, uh-huh. which over 60% of kids online have been bullied in one way or another. Now, unfortunately, it's around 30% are bullied on a regular basis, meaning a couple of times a week to as many times as seven times a week, 24 by seven. The way the film started was uh, I had come home from work and I saw the story here in Decatur, Georgia of a 11 year old boy who hung himself from being cyberbullied. And at the time our son was a year and a half old and I thought, you know, I just can't see my son facing that kind of future where he could be cyberbullied and want to take his own life or be so depressed by the effects of cyberbullying. So. Uh, we first reached out to the family of the young boy. Um, the mother didn't want to speak to us. Uh, we had to talk to her through Facebook, then through text message, finally meet us in a parking lot at Walmart during the day. And it was very difficult to get to the families to talk about it. But what we found is that those families are a community and they talk to each other. So once we were able to engage one family, they gave us that was the credibility. Sort of, there was a, sort of an avalanche absolutely. after that. Uh-huh. Absolutely. So we're able to get in touch with, uh, frankly, hundreds of families. Now it's thousands of families that are suffering under this problem. What do you think, uh, you know, having done the documentary now, and uh, have you come to any kind of conclusions as to, as to how we can control uh, this, this problem? Or is there any way that we can control it? It seems like something that's... Yeah, it's like trying to control the internet. You, know, it, it, you, you think, well, if we put the software here, the, the legislation, that's not really the way it works. It, it's a cultural issue. It's about... It's about changing our thinking in a lot absolutely. of ways. It's not, not our actions. Our, or, well, our actions and our thinking, really. But, but through our thinking, then our actions. Yes. You know, and, and it's a lot about empathy. It's a lot yes. about the sort of loss of empathy that we've had in our culture. Oh, I think it's you know, degraded do you think over. That's, do you think the loss of empathy has to do with just the loss of personal contact that, that, that a lot of people... No, no. Know, I, I, I think that was already an undercurrent is what we found when we were doing our documentary. There had already been sort of this numbness or, or, or abrasiveness in our culture going on for 30 or 40 years. And then technology just enabled it at a different level and automated it. What's right. that anonymity behind the keyboard of, you know, ah, I'm going to say this, I have this name, and you know, you're not going to be able to get me and get in a gang of other anonymous people to gang up on another person. Mm-hmm. Even though by being anonymous, they're not being any more brave, they're actually very cowardly. But uh-huh. It is just that change in empathy and then the technology automating it, automating it and making it much worse. Right. Uh, how long did it take you to do the documentary? <laughs> It took us two and a half years. Wow. Uh, yeah, it was. Like, a, but it was, was that was that right right from when you had the first notion you, uh, and and uh, uh, three years and three years with the, the first notion. Name? Uh, uh, Muta Ali Muhammad. Uh huh. Okay. Um, he is uh, the grandson of Ozzy Davis and Ricky oh. D. Oh. Okay. Wow. Uh, so we wanted somebody who really understood style and, and really could bring out the uh, the pro- proper you know understanding and feeling about the topic. Mm-hmm. So he comes from formal training as well as he had practiced as an excellent music video and feature film director. Uh-huh. Um, so we wanted somebody with high quality and who also could bring in a crew that had high quality in terms of the production value. Right. But the uh, the idea started really three years ago. We had uh, we were robbed in the middle of this. We had just finished filming. Well, and all our equipment and all our footage was stolen. Not except, during the shooting of this movie, uh, but during, during the, really? just at the just as we went into post production. Wow! Everything was stolen, and except for one copy of all the footage we kept offsite. So that was the, the extra eight, you know, ten, twelve months. Uh-huh. Uh huh. So, but but anyway, it was a labor of love. We we did it with uh, we self funded. Uh, we're not selling it for profit. Uh, we actually allow school systems and advocates and counselors to have free access to all the footage. That's a great idea. And it, it, it's like, a, it's an open source, and I'm like, I'm a software guy, so it's like an open source project where anyone who's really involved in this can come in, create their own voice about it, 
they can actually spread it to the people they know, and it has a social effects. So we've had it out for we announced it for two weeks, and we started off with zero followers on Twitter and you know nobody on Facebook. We've gone to eight thousand in mm -hmm. two weeks as a result because of this approach of making the content available. Right. Yeah. Uh, it's, uh, I mean, it sounds like a real, it's, uh, it's obviously a really noble, noble project and it's just something that, it's something that absolutely needs to be talked about a lot more and, uh, you know, I just I think it's great that you're going to give it to, yeah. to schools and stuff like that. Schools, civic organizations, anybody who is challenged by this issue, when it could be even families who get together and say, hey, you know what, we need to understand this because there's a huge divide between where kids and youth are and where adults are. I mean, it's not just like a technical thing, it's the cultural issue. Like you said, like, how do people interact online? How do they, inter how, what sort of socialization skills do they develop or don't develop? Mm -hmm. And right it's now- It's really all about not developing social that's skills. It. I mean, that's, that's, that's it. really it. And that's, that's something that's, that's really, you know, yeah. endemic in our, in our, in our culture, particularly yeah. the younger, younger people who've grew, grown up with nothing but the internet in their lives and, and, uh, and have, have lost the ability to really, yeah, I mean, empathy is so, so right, you know, lost the ability to empathize, lost the ability to put themselves in the other people's shoes lost the ability to actually be able to engage whether uh, whether what they say is truly true what they say or what they type is something that can truly truly send someone spiraling down into a place that they maybe might not have been able to imagine it taking them you know they might think it's a joke or whatever they could, they but could it's, think it's a joke the keyboard doesn't cry you know I mean yeah. that's the way it is they, they it's like they don't understand the impact of their words and if you look at the behaviors, you know, the two kids can be sitting next to each other on a sofa and they'll be texting each other yeah, instead of talking. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's that disconnection using yeah. technology as this middle objective solid without emotion sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And then it turns out, well, no, that the effect is much different on the other person once it's communicated. So we examine that, we examine it from the position of, or the perspective of the victim the families, and the bullies. So we interviewed the bullies as to their motivation. Why are they in this? Why are they doing this? So there's a lot about the kids in this movie and like why did they get into it or why do they send new pictures of themselves? Why Why are you willing to sex when you're going to have that posted everywhere and it's going to be there forever? And the reason that they'll do it, like, well, you know, a bunch of boys just wanted me to do it so I did it. Or a bunch of girls think this will be cool and I'm trying to brag to my buddies. Right. Like, wow, well, it's just know? a whole other different... It's just a whole other different level of just regular school guard, school yep. guard bullying, but it's got a sort of, it's got an extra sense of a particular menace to it. And, and here's the deal. Schoolyard bullying used to be around 18% of all kids experienced schoolyard bullying 10 years ago. Yeah. It's down to 8% now. Right. But the cyberbullying, you it's know, is at over the 50 to uh, 60% rate. I would imagine that it's mostly girls. It is. Uh -huh. You can see this three to one margin. And the boys don't do it as much because the boys, except if they get into like a gang, literally. Right. Um, there's this uh, face beef gang that goes around and they try to really just shock families where there's been a tragedy. Uh -huh. So if it was uh, Aurora uh -huh. or if it was in Connecticut. So they're actually just go, really trolling. They're trolling. That's no, what that's, they do. That's I mean, it's, it's unbelievable. That's, um, but you know. but you know what you know what that all that stuff is I think I think a lot of that stuff is is somehow and you correct me if you or tell me if you disagree but I think a lot of that stuff has to do with people who are closed off inside who are trying to wake something up inside absolutely uh, absolutely it goes back to what you when we what we found in the film was uh, those kids that felt disconnected already. This was the worst. They were they were going to go out there and, and, and be the worst perpetrators because they didn't have any other socialization. They didn't have any other socialization skills. So they felt only like they belonged once they were committing this act. Now the the biggest problem that everyone says exists, however, was the bystanders. Like if you saw bullying on the schoolyard, a lot of kids look at it a different way or go or you know just you know kind of shun it or walk away. But a lot of kids might jump in and say you know stop online. Most of the kids stand back, don't do anything. So mm -hmm. this bystander issue is something on the range when there's an incident of 84 to 90 percent. So a couple of kids might jump in, but for the most part, the kids stand back. Then the bystanders sometimes jump in, and then they jump back out. So mm -hmm. it's not like a consistent thing. 
unless there's a ringleader and, and it's not like it's just isolated. It's everywhere and anyone who's online, anyone who knows somebody or has a child, uh, but anyone knows somebody who's young or young adult, it's really starting to affect them. And it's going into people in their 20s. Obviously, uh -huh. we have Tyler Clemente who committed suicide. Of course. Uh, and, you know, this is not just affecting 14-year-olds and 8-year-olds and that sort of thing. No, no, I mean, it's a big it's a big problem for just about anybody working, yeah. you know, who spends a lot of time on the Internet, yeah. as I do. And I, and I... I kind of try and stay out of any kind uh, of. Yeah. I stay out of any kind of but trolling sure, issues or trying to. But I'm sure when you see abusive yeah. comments made on a website or, or or, or I, you think people might give you some comments that you're not uh, expecting, uh, uh, you just go, "Where does this come from? Like, how the hell does someone do that?" Right. Right. And that's that's the growing. Uh, Accepted behavior, and that's that's one of the issues right. about civility. Uh -huh. There's this whole. Uh, we have John Lewis, the congressman, who's in the civil rights movement. He's uh -huh. in the film. He's featured. The legend. He's the legend. Uh, you know, we have the president. Obviously, we have Debbie Wasserman Schultz, but we also have uh, Bill Bennett, who had been in the Reagan administration, uh, former head of the Secret Service. And we were like, why are you calling us about this film? How did you learn about it? They go, this is a big issue. We, we're trying to get involved. We're trying to make sure. And I said, what are you looking for? They go, we don't want anything. Mm. We do, but we do know this has become a huge issue. So we, can we speak out about it? Even if we gave them 30 seconds, they wanted to be able to say something. Wow, that's, that's extraordinary. And that's, and, and that's they actually different. reached out? They reached out to us. Amazing. We had the, the sheriff of Cook County is in the film. He runs the largest uh, city jail system or prison system in the world. Uh -huh. okay, not in the country, in the world. Right. And so he's in there and, and he said, I needed to talk to you because I wanted to explain to you, we can't do anything. Yeah. You are going to have to tell people they've got to do something about it themselves. So in that in that respect, uh, when when the when the the, the film festival. Uh, well, how are you distributing the movie eventually? I mean, besides right. besides getting it to, you know churches and schools and all the yeah. and, and all the institutions but uh, I mean is this is this kind of, is this is this the kind of thing that you would provide to people to watch on online you yeah, know for absolutely. free in some they, way they will uh, write to us and say here I would like to see this I have an issue it just can be one sentence mm -hmm. or you know I need to do this for my kids and myself we'll provide it to them for free mm -hmm. we think that the future of documentary social documentaries mm -hmm. and social cause documentaries is an open distribution model yeah in other words we're seeing everything going to you know Netflix and, and Amazon they're making their own films and they're doing their own direct distribution but when you look at, at social cause uh, the news organizations have already divorced themselves from caring about that mm -hmm. right they'll tell you about the Kardashians all day long but they won't help you know explain a social issue or a cultural issue mm -hmm. so it's left up to documentary makers mm -hmm. We think there is a model for social documentary makers with a passion. They can raise their money through Kickstarter or something else, right? Indiegogo. And they can come up with a way that can influence our culture and make change. So it doesn't have to be an Arab Spring. It can be a social spring. It can be something that creates an opportunity for change in a rapid fashion. It can address issues that used to take decades to get addressed. Right. They relied on a government and relied on a private institution and no longer we have to do that. We can get in front of things. So we have, as a result of this film, already a uh, private organization, foundation to address juvenile cancer. Mm -hmm. And they've come to us to make a documentary on the fact that there haven't been any drugs released in the last 20 years. Mm -hmm. But the, what they've been doing is finding ways to reach out through social media, right. directly to the families, mm -hmm. direct them to research, and then provide them with resolutions or solutions for what's happening to their family. So is that your next project? Yes, that's our next project. Oh, next very project. Good. It's called Mikey's Way. And okay. Mikey was a 16-year-old uh, boy who, uh, young man who was admitted, he, he got into Harvard, so he was admitted to Harvard, but he was diagnosed with this juvenile cancer and there was no cure, so he, he was brilliant, brilliant, brilliant kid. He decided to research his own Cure. So mm -hmm. for four years he preserved his life by going and literally knocking on the door at Sloan Kettering and saying, let me come in and research my own cure. And he actually found a cure for the disease that wow. he had and preserved his life. Now, he passed, but the, the work that he did has been passed along now mm -hmm. and actually is a cure for this particular uh, cancer. So wow. we, we think that there's more Mikeys out there. We think there are a lot of opportunities for social good through documentary making. Absolutely. And that's the way to do it. I mean, as I was telling you, you know, at, at these festivals and at just about any festival that anybody out there might go to, 
I would say if you want to go and see almost 100% good stuff, because you can all, you're always rolling the dice when you're going to see a narrative film. But, but for me, there are so many great subjects that deserve movies to be made by them, and documentary filmmakers are, are very much on the Absolutely. edge of doing stories, uh, taking a look at stories that deserve to be told through the documentary genre. If you see it's on a documentary slate, I'd say go and see it, because it's probably going to blow you away. Agreed. And And with that, I have to say, you know, thank you so thank much, you so Les, uh, for you. sitting down, and I can't wait to see Submit, the documentary. With that, I say goodbye to all you movie geeks out there. I'll see you guys later. Thank you. Become a member of the Movie Geeks United family. Follow us on Twitter at twitter.com slash moviegeeksunite, Facebook at facebook.com slash moviegeeksunited, YouTube at youtube.com slash moviegeeksunited or bookmark our website at moviegeeksunited.net and you can also access our entire library of programs including more than 600 filmmaker interviews right here on Blog Talk Radio at blogtalkradio.com slash moviegeeksunited and thank you to my esteemed uh, cameraman and sound and lighting guy, Rich Gedney, who, without whom uh, we could not be seen here. All right, I'll see you guys later.